Hey, I'm Paul Rabelais, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to leave it to the kids, part two of eight. So I'm Paul Rabelais. I'm an estate planning attorney. I help our clients uh, get and keep their legal affairs in order. And my previous video was part one of this eight-part seri series on how to, how to leave it to the kids. In part one, we talked about the, the lifetime gift. Now we move on to part two, which is what I'll call the outright bequest. It's it's the most common, it's the most traditional way to leave it to the kids. And when I say leave it to the kids, I could also say leave it to the grandkids or leave it to other loved ones or friends. Just how do you leave a bequest behind? So when someone uh, just leaves an outright bequest, how they do it is typically it's through either their last will and testament, which says something like, Whatever I got when I die, I leave it to my two kids equally and I leave it to them outright. It, it might not say those specific words, but I'm overemphasizing the outright part of the bequest. Or they may have a, a revocable living trust uh, because they want to avoid probate. And in their revocable living trust, it may say, uh, my four kids are the principal beneficiaries of my trust to receive my trust assets when I die, and they will receive those assets outright. So again, being a little, um, emphasizing a little bit the, the outright part, but, but you know, when a will says, you know, I, I leave my estate to Fred and Ginger, that's an outright bequest, or, you know, I leave it to Fred, or I leave it to Fred and Ginger, General, Fred and Ginger equally, or I leave 60% to Fred and 40% to Ginger, Ginger. Those are, those are outright bequests. On the same note, um, most life insurance policies, IRAs that have beneficiary designations, the recipient of those assets are likely to receive them outright because when Joe Blow goes to sign his beneficiary designation form with the insurance company or with the financial institution and he has to designate beneficiaries, he's just gonna stick names in there. So that means those beneficiaries will receive their portion outright. All right, so um, what are some of the reasons people leave a bequest outright? Well, one is, I think one reason clearly is it's, it's simple and there can be value in simplicity. So uh, when you hear some of the remaining parts of our eight part series, um, you may think that's a little more complicated, but some, people are okay with that given the protections that it provides. But sometimes, uh, you know, there's value in simplicity and, and I get it, people wanna keep, um, keep things simple when they can. So an outright bequest is simple. Some people tell me, you know, Paul, um, <clears throat> let's just keep it simple. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna leave it to my kids. It's, it's up to them to, to do the right thing with it. Um, they can do whatever they want to with it. Let's just leave it outright. And other people say, Paul, heck, you know, I I'll be gone. It doesn't really matter to me. Let's just leave it outright to the kids. So those are some kind of reasons why I hear people settle on the simplicity of the outright bequest. Now let's go into some of the consequences of an outright bequest. So one is when a uh, person receives an outright bequest, <clears throat> if, they're, if they're married at the time or if they get married subsequent to receiving that inheritance, an outright bequest is gonna be fairly easy to commingle with other assets that that recipient has with their spouse and when they commingle their inheritance, which at the moment they inherit it, it's separate property, but if they commingle or mix it up with other assets that they have with their spouse, particularly here in Louisiana, which is a community property state where anything a spouse owns is presumed to be community property, then it that you know inheritance becomes community property. And if the recipient or if the child of yours gets divorced, uh, a more likelihood that they'll have to split the inheritance with their spouse or perhaps your ex daughter-in-law or son-in-law. A second consequence is if a minor um, is listed as an heir or a beneficiary or what's commonly referred to as a legatee and a will, 
uh, and, and you pass away and something goes outright to a minor, it's nothing short of kind of an outright disaster. Courts get involved. A minor can't inherit outright. They don't have the ability to uh, contract to receive an inheritance. So if a minor inherits outright, it, it's got to go through the courts. Courts have to appoint guardians of the money for the minor. Um, those guardians have to get permission from a judge to spend the money on behalf of the minor. And on the minor's 18th birthday, when they no longer become a minor, you know, the, the remaining funds just get kind of dumped in their lap. So it goes from crazy supervision to no supervision on their 18th birthday. So never, never name a minor as a beneficiary of an IRA or a life insurance policy. And really you shouldn't name a minor in your will or living trust to receive anything outright. Stay tuned to the rest of the parts of this eight part series to find out more about how you should leave things to a minor. Now, even if you are leaving things to an adult, if that an adult, I would say, is someone over the age of 18, they're not or 18 or older, they're not a minor anymore. If they're not responsible and they blow it or they use it for the wrong reasons, drugs, wine, women and song, well, that's not bad. Um, whatever for, you know, they, they just, um, they don't take care of their inheritance. Then maybe you defeated the whole purpose of trying to leave them inheritance and maybe you did more harm than good. So that's an adverse consequence is if there is an adult and who's not financially responsible and responsible enough to handle the money, they may blow it and you know, no, nothing good happens out of that. And then, uh, as you'll find out from some of our subsequent parts of the series, when you just make an outright bequest, there's, there's certainly no certainty that any of that will, will move on to the next generation, to, to your child's children, to your grandchildren. And things may wind up going to you know, your, your um, child's spouse or your child's stepchildren. So no guarantee it's going to go on down the next generation. And then another consequence is if either now or in the future you have a child perhaps with some disabilities who's getting some certain government benefits, by leaving an outright bequest to that child, they may get kicked off um, of those government benefits, which could be a significant thing because uh, that child who's receiving the government benefits can only have a you know, certain amount of assets and by leaving them an inheritance outright causes them to go over that amount that they can have so they lose the government benefits. So really, in, in summary, an outright bequest is common, it's traditional, but I look forward to sharing the remaining parts of this eight part series to you know, open your eyes a little bit about what are some of the other options that you have so you can consider all of the options, including the outright bequest, when you're making those estate planning decisions um, for your family. Just some people aren't aware that there are some other vehicles that can provide you know, more protection than, than just the outright bequest. Again, I'm not, I'm not an opponent of the outright bequest and I like simplicity. But uh, stay tuned, I'll be doing about one, uh, these about one a day to get through my eight part series so I can move on to other topics, but I want to get this out of the way. So this one's part two of eight. Stay tuned. Um, subscribe. Really important that you hit the red subscribe button and then the notification bell and then thumbs up like if, if you felt like this provided you with some value. Also, feel free to comment below. Uh, I think everybody, I know everybody benefits from your, from your comments, especially the ones that are kind of well thought out. And um, y'all have a great day. Take care.